Hey, welcome to Tech Tips, everybody. I'm Amanda. And I'm Linus. And today we're actually reviewing the Canon R8. Yeah, it's, against it's technically a review slash versus. Review, review versus. It's a comparison. Yeah. That's yeah. the word for that. Yeah. Against the Sony A7 IV. Four. This is not the A7 IV. It's, it's just a stand-in because I had to go on a shoot today. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> but all the footage is from the A7 IV. We promise four. nothing was shot on the AR5. We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> but both were shot. Everything was shot with the 24 to 70 lenses, the, yeah. the G Master version 1 and the uh, 2.8 Canon RF 1. So... Yeah, uh, first thing, let's just talk about what's what. And, and again, like the, the body of the A7 Dude. IV is very similar to this. This yeah. one is heavier, but the, that's not the comparison. The grip, that's all, the folks. grip is the same. Yeah. Like it's almost identical holding them uh, compared to this grip. What were your feelings with those? I feel like I need to buy that little um, extender. Yeah, the, the, the grip. Yeah, but it's not it's not oh, a battery grip, but it's like an extender. Like the small rig one. Yeah. Yeah. But you have a beastie hand. I have pretty big hands, but yes. I have a size eight glove if you're if you're doing tech gloves. Okay. Right? You're like a size ten. Yeah. But even with a size eight hand, it's I still, uh, I find yeah, I find pinky. that like uh, annoying. In one way I almost prefer the M fifty because it's it's lighter and smaller. You know, if I'm not going to have the whole grip, I prefer having... But a thing that yeah. we don't usually do that makes it not a problem is we don't usually do handheld... Photography, though. Yeah, well, I don't do that much. I do. But so you don't have the I'm, I'm the stand-in on this review for the photography. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. Uh, right, right from the beginning, uh, Linus and I took the two cameras down to Copenhagen. Yeah. And we did Had a some di uh, pictures. Day. Yeah, exactly. And then we did some vlogging and stuff. So let's just cut down to a little montage of our photograph adventure. <laughs> things that we found when we were down here, there in, in Copenhagen was actually this uh, water fountain with this guy in the bathtub. Hilarious. But right did, by the train station. Yeah, in exactly. The central. So let's use that just to go straight into slow-mo. We used the slow-mo with the Canon R8 in 150. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we compared it with the 100 of the Sony. <clears throat> Again, both look really good, but you can see the disadvantage the Canon has yeah. without the IBIS when you're yeah. trying to hold it still like that. But we do, we did realize afterwards that we had it cropped in more on the Sony, which really helps the IBIS. Yeah, you guys are going to see in a second, because when we do the, the other little bit in yeah. Copenhagen. But just as a comparison, I came home after looking at the footage and we blew this dandelion here oh, yeah, yeah. all over the place and yeah, caused yeah, yeah. more weeds. And <laughs> which you love, which I hate so much. <laughs> but yeah, I actually felt that on tripod, the Canon was so buttery smooth. Now the Sony only goes up to a hundred frames per second, mm. and the Canon goes up to one hundred and fifty for pal. That's right. And was it ten eighty? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the, so the nice. Sony is ten eighty two. Yeah. Not four K. No. No. No, not yet. No. If you want that, you've got to buy something more That's monies. More monies. More monies. More money, more money, more money. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the 150 with the Canon on tripod, amazing, nice slow-mo. Yeah. N now, let's go back on to... On Gimbal, too. We've done 150 before. Not in this now, but it looks really nice. Oh, yeah. Let's throw that shot in. We could probably Just, show... I think I have Yeah, I have that yeah, shot. Let's throw, throw that in. Throw that in. Going through the flowers. <laughs> that was where during our um, test with 
the the that tripod. That was one you were doing. Your I was thing, doing the and tripod. I was just bored. Yeah, I did the tripod <laughs> test with the uh, uh, what was it? Photo Pro. Photo Pro. Photo uh, Pro X Cross X yeah. Air Cross. Yeah. The blue, the blue one. So nice tripod. Anyway, uh, yeah. So let's go and go over to our little vlog test here. Yeah, let's do the vlog test and. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. You'll hear it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is now the vlog test, the focus test, the audio test with the Sony A7 IV. Yes, with its own IBIS. It does crop in though a little bit. I can tell because my arms aren't longer. <laughs> I'm in Copenhagen. You can see. Uh, I currently have the image stabilization on the lens and that's pretty, basically everything I have. Hopefully you can hear me uh, hopefully it looks pretty good even though I'm only using this image stabilization on the actual lens. So yeah, looks pretty good. At the harbor here in Copenhagen, really nice. All right. Uh, yeah. Now just just before we say anything, here's the vlog test with the Sony without the crop. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys can hear me. A uh, little vlog test here in Copenhagen Harbor. Uh, gorgeous, having some music in the background and everything. It's just really nice. Uh, okay, fair comparison? I'm just saying. The, the Canon synergy that they get with the lens uh, stabilization it's impressive. Yeah. Now this was on a mantis pod. This was on a mantis pod. Handheld Both with of them. a mantis pod. Yeah. Both of them. Um, again, too, I have to agree. The Canon was excellent. The Sony with the crop in was very stable. Yeah. It was stupid stable. But the Canon didn't do very bad against it. But then when you look at the Sony without the, without the crop and without the stabilization, ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I mean, this is legendary Canon. Uh, Canon. Canon, Canon L glass with the stabilization in it. It's yeah. very, very good. Yeah. All right. So, uh, like I think you heard in, I could, I, re, I only realized that we were cropped in because I couldn't see my own hair. I was like, yeah, yeah. I know I'm zoomed in <laughs> because my arms aren't longer. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I can't see yeah. all of me. No, so true. So yeah. Anyway, but overall, we had a great time <laughs> in Copenhagen. Yeah. And yeah, from there, we did our very classic, Jake eye tracking test. Yeah, the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man. Let's go over to Jake and the Let's Muffin Man. Yeah. All right, so I'm a little disappointed. Yes. <laughs> it's not, not great. No, it, I, did, I did make a lot of changes to the settings. Yeah. So you can, you can actually see maybe Jake can fill in the B-roll of our first attempt here or Jessica, whoever's editing. Uh, you guys fill in the B-roll of the first attempt. Yeah. I tried. I tried the settings over and over again. Mm. I did eventually get a setting that locked it in a lot smoother. That's good. But the Sony was on it. Here you can actually see the test after we had all the settings set up properly and the Canon is locked on. The R8 has Jake here. And the, oh, he's actually playing Benjamin, our camera buddy. Uh, the Sony's locked in. If you wanna see the settings we use, they're in our R8 review. But this is supposed to be similar as, to the R3's eye tracking. And is it? Far from the eye tracking you get in the R5. And it's supposed to be similar eye tracking to the R3. It's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> I did, know, I did have, no, exactly. And I did have similar issues with the R7. Mm. Again, claiming <clears throat> epic eye tracking. And if you didn't have the R5 sitting next to it, you might not notice. <laughs> Actually, yeah, maybe that's the issue. Right? Yeah. But when you put it up against some of these higher end Canon cameras or even the higher end Sony cameras, mm. it's struggling. 
Yeah. Now, this was also a really high contrast situation, but that's where we like to do these tests. Yeah. Where it's that's not why we easy. do it. That's where we do the test. Exactly. For that purpose. At one point, though, before I fiddled with the settings, Jake was standing right in front of the camera, like, <laughs> me. Like, and it was <laughs> like, where it did was you like, go? Ooh, a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was one of the issues I had when we were at the Ren Fair. Yes. Uh, but that was when I was in slow mo. So I don't know if it's different in slow-mo, but... Um. Yeah, Canon, again, too, they've had a much harder time in slow-mo tracking mm -hmm. uh, and in the higher the higher uh, resolutions tracking, even the C70. Right. Uh, when you put the C70 in its full 4K mode, it's like, oh, there you are. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> but it's been improved, like the firmware updates that have come, so I wouldn't be surprised at all. I, if I think, yeah, um, we're hoping. <laughs> I think that you'll see uh, updates yeah. for this one that will fix that a lot. Yeah, and when that comes, if it comes, we'll uh, yeah. tell you guys too. Yeah, exactly. All right, so what else do we have to test here with the video? <clears throat> we have... Well, I had some photos too. Yeah. Video-wise. But video-wise, we have some low-light video. Yes. So we have these ducks. We have a ducky. We have a ducky here. adventure. Yeah. I was trying to think of what can we record, and then my little girl came running by, quack, 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 and I was like, Yes. Ducks. <laughs> we will do ducks. Yeah. So, so just before we go in, uh, Jake set this up so the light level is set for 1200 ISO. Mm -hmm. No, 12,000 ISO. 1,200, No, 12,800. <laughs> 12,800. Yeah, that's it. Where is it? Ah. The last one. I jumped all the way to the flowers. So much. So Just get back. Obey me. <laughs> Huzzah! Okay. There you go. Yeah, yeah. 12,800. So that's where the level for the lights is. And mm -hmm. then we just gain down just yeah. to see. Exactly. So. And then what Jake did in this, the post-edit was he just equally increased. He like made a preset and yeah. applied it to all of them. Copy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, just to <clears throat> gain up this much percentage. Yeah. I will have him put in the description right now or in the text here how much he gained that up so you guys know that too. Oh yeah, so let's throw into that. Yeah, look let's at go the video. take a look at it. Yeah, so at 3200 uh, 3, ISO, I found that the Canon was way nicer. Yeah. And that's, oh. a, that's a shock because Sony is like notoriously the boss of all right? low light, right? Mm. Um, that being said, so as we go on, I didn't think either of them were super usable. And this is an extreme condition. So it just, it emphasizes the importance. Even if you have a camera that is an incredible camera, or even if you're just an amateur, if you're an amateur person who wants to buy this camera for just going around and doing your kids' school events or whatever, church events, whatever. This is, if you're gonna spend 2,000, you can spend a hundred bucks on one of those little aperture lights that we talked about. Yeah. There's so many little pocket lights, even 30 bucks for the tiny little Godox one. And we'll never have to talk about this again. I'm looking at you, consumer. <laughs> Am I right yeah. though? No, but yes. You, yes. you spend the money on these guys. And yeah, the, the glass. Just since we have the AR5 here, yeah, it performs incredibly in low light. It kicks butt. It does. But you shouldn't have to. No. <laughs> you know? You shouldn't have to. You be. shouldn't have to. If you yeah. can carry a pocket light, even your iPhone light, that you could just shine on the thing you're trying to shoot, do it. Just do it. Okay? All right. All let's, right. let's move on. Now go, go to the beginning of the timeline here. Yes. I shot uh, two different scenarios with log, C log three and S log three. Um, I'm pretty sure it's S log three. If it's S Cinetone, I'll have Jake just put it there at the bottom. It was a <laughs> couple of days ago. <laughs> but if you look at the edit, one thing I can say, when I was grading the R8, it was way easier. The C log was so much faster to work with and I've consistently found that. Now being a Canon user, I'm just used to the look of Canon. Yeah, I wonder if that's why Rec 709. it's so easy for us. So like it just, took me, it literally took me less than a minute to grade the R8 footage where it yeah. took me maybe five minutes to grade the 
Sony one. It's not a lot, but small. It's clip. not a lot, but we're, I mean, we're comparison, yeah. comparing here. Okay, first let's look at the the clip. The sun is facing Jake, and the trees are shadowy in the background. Mm. In both, I was really impressed at how much I could raise the shadow. Like you can actually see the trail going up behind Jake over his shoulder there. Yeah, uh, you see it all. Yeah, exactly. And it's clean. No, and in the original footage, it, you didn't have that necessarily, it was mm. able to come up a lot. So big dynamic range on the low end, and it's not grainy, which is another amazing which thing. we like. Yeah, and again, talking about the low light capability of these cameras, mm. uh, that's where you want that strength, not in trying to shoot in 12,800 ISO. Please. If we look at the, on the other hand, if we look at the uh, other shot where I have the sun kind of highlighting the side of Jake's face and he's dark. Yeah. When I graded this, it did take a lot more effort. I found that I lost more highlights in the R8 than I did in the Sony. You can see, really? see over the lake, there's a lot more detail. Oh. I did feel like I liked the Canon's look better at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, it blows up more yeah. here. So I, I, I felt that I, liked, I did like the look of it better, but it definitely lost the highlights mm. on this one. And they were set exactly identical, yeah. everything. Everything I did was identical. It does look like the test. shadows are a bit nicer on the, how did that feel when you edited it? Yeah, the again, Canon. the Canon was so perfect. I just basically slapped on the C-Log yeah. 3 LUT and it was like, oh yeah, that <laughs> looks good. <laughs> I didn't have to do very much and then played, tweaked a little bit with the, the high and the low end highlights. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well then I guess if you're gonna shoot something like this, you would have to just, if you're on the Canon, Step, stop down one more. Yeah, I can say one more thing. Sony's come a long way with their color science, mm. but I still love this, the Canon. The skin tone in the Canon, yeah. way more Dude, nice. It's gorgeous. It is. It feels more natural to me than the Sony. Uh, we had with, there's a picture with a race car you'll see in a bit when we go up to that, and you can actually see the lime green look of the Sony's versus the almost more neon green look of the mm -hmm. Canon. And I think that that's where it is. I think that the greens are greenier. Greenier. In the Sony's. Anyway. Science. That's science. <laughs> Scientific for you. <laughs> All right. All right, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it, I think, for the, the video side of it. Let's go on over to the, the photos now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, the so, car, right? Yeah, here. the car here. So what we did here is I laid down into the grass. Which we're gonna show. Yep. And for your entertainment. For your entertainment. And I put them on high speed shutter, both of them, and went do 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 do. Now, oh, yeah. we're gonna do another little test with the, just the R8 later on, where we review the difference between like the electronic curtain, because it has one electronic curtain shutter versus electronic shutter. I chose the one curtain shutter on this. The electronic shutter theoretically is faster. I think, but uh, it said right on, as soon as I selected it, it was like fast moving objects will be blurred. And I was like, well, that's not what I want in this test. I want to actually capture the motion. And yeah. uh, why I always love doing this test where I try to get the sharpest picture I can from something running in front of the camera is because one of the biggest questions I get is from grandmas out there. And I hope that there's some grandmas watching us out there. Uh, how come when I take pictures of the kids when they're opening presents or uh, at birthday parties and everything, they look like they're the Flash? They don't say the Flash. They don't know who the Flash is. Either but they're it, high on sugar or you're yeah, it just, it just looks like there's like a yeah, blur behind them, right? <laughs> and I'm like, faster shutter. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I was going for here. Wanted to see how sharp these cars could get. And side by side, I don't see an awful lot of difference. The only motion blur you see is in the round tire. Yeah, and yeah. it's pretty cool to see. It is, yeah. To see how, just yeah. moving just a little bit. If you zoom in under the car, you can see the rocks are dead sharp Yeah. under the car. Impressive. So I think that overall the car was pretty, pretty sharp going through there. Pretty cool. Yeah. Now, we did do some other uh, photos. Uh, we did a macro test with yes. strawberries. Oh. I love the strawberries. The strawberries. So J Jake and Linus have been doing a couple of things with IKEA catalogs. So, and plus we've been doing our Ida's 
uh, cooking program mm -hmm. in uh, on the Swedish channel. You guys have seen some behind the scenes of that. Uh, so they really did up the strawberries. So <laughs> here's the beautiful <laughs> strawberry shots. Side by side, the two cameras looked really close to me. When you zoom in to the seeds, they are so sharp yeah. and so nice. Very similar. It's so similar. They were so similar that we grabbed the iPhone, put, uh, <laughs> Put the shot from the iPhone 12. Dude, the iPhone don't stand a chance. No, and just, just look. <laughs> At the widest angle, they look very similar. But oh when you zoom gosh. in, no yeah. details. Yeah. So super impressed with the macro capability. And it, this is not true macro. All of you out there, yes, I understand the one-to-one -one ratio thing. But when you get right, right zoomed in, when you pixel peep, the, the quality is awesome on both of these guys. Yeah. 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 Um, then... Uh, I was looking for a low light subject and it just so happened that your brother stopped by yeah. to drop off something at my apartment and I jumped him in his car <laughs> Get out. and started taking pictures of the car and him. Most yeah. impressive shot right here, Christopher himself. Dude. Look how dark these guys are. And then look when we drag over the effects. Yeah. My gosh. Right? Dude, that's so impressive usable. from the... From the um, and again, what? talking about no noise in the, in the low light. The it's, it's, oh. it's not so much about pumping that ISO up. It's about how clean the picture is without the ISO. Yeah. You know, yeah. really. Uh, next thing that I did with the uh, pictures, I took a couple pictures of some flowers. Yeah, we did some... So, yeah, what are they called in Swedish? Well, whatever. They're kind of lily... No, not lilies. Not lilies, but yeah. You, well, you guys will see them. You know what they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Tell us in the comments. We don't not florists, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So here I was trying to regain the highlights on it. Yeah. And you can actually see it does a really good job. Of course, because of the amazing bokeh from these lenses, I'm not going to get anything in there focus. Is <laughs> there's no. I went, <laughs> when I when I went and did the edit afterwards, I was like, oh, oh there's man. actually nothing in focus <laughs> in the background. This looks way too good. But you can see the colors all come back. It's yeah. very nice, yeah, yeah. right? Then uh, we took some pictures of a leaf. Maple leaf, yeah. Maple leaves. Totally underexposed maple leaf. Yeah. And look, still bring it up, and they look the same. They look identical. They so. these guys are very compatible. Yeah. Identical cameras. Uh, oh, we forgot to show just the 4K video. Right. Yeah. Sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, 4K video of the leaf that I took, same leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and look, they're well, actually not the same leaf. It was a different leaf. It was a cute little red but leaf. But they got the same leaf. They got the same <laughs> leaf, yeah. Um, different leaf. But yeah, you can see actually how clean the picture is. These this are both is 4K 25 or 4K, 50? 4K 25, yeah. 25, yeah. yeah. And that leads me to my next point about the video that we missed. Um, overheating. Mm. All right, first test is at the maximum resolution both of these cameras do, 4K50 uh, at the toppest setting that they have. Yeah, And Biggest. it wasn't a long test. Scroll that footage. I'll tell you that, yeah. yeah. All right, so both cameras overheat it pretty quickly. Yeah, you, you can see there how long we got. And so I said to Jake, let's do it again. Let's drop it down to 4K25. Mm. And this is where the rubber hit the road. The A7R4 died after 17 minutes or so. He went on and on and on to the point where we had to just turn it off because we ran out of time. It was like 45 minutes later. I was like, okay, we get the point. It's fine. Yeah. We get the point. It's good. You're going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but price-wise, what an advantage you get from... Yeah. You know, like the amount of the, the similarities in quality, and this is almost 10,000 cheaper than this guy, or uh, sorry, we're in Sweden. Uh, $10,000. This guy is, comes in at like 2,400 US, and I think he's 1,400 US. I'll double check those prices. You have to forgive me whenever I say prices because I'm dealing in multiple currencies in my, currencies. in my normal job. I'm buying things for the company. So, yeah, uh, I always I'm in euros, I'm in dollars, I'm in Canadian dollars, and I'm in, in Swedish kroners. Yeah. Yeah. Final, final thoughts on the pictures, though. Yes. Uh, going back to the photos, because we kind of jumped back to the video. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, overall, as photography cameras, these are so awesome. They're very, very fun. And the 24 megapixel on the R8 is, does its job very well. Yeah, I think so, actually, and uh, shockingly so. Mm. Yeah, I was worried. I didn't buy 
I was going to buy the R6 Mark II, but we ended up getting the R5C for the same price because it went on sale with cash back. And it was a no-brainer because now I got two C70s, yeah. basically, and an R5. We're recording it on right now. On yeah, exactly. It's very nice. The strawberries. Sorry. Strawberries. My biggest takeaway on the photo mm. goes back to the strawberries because what you have to know is those were handheld. They were not tripod. And that, for me, is always a, a big thing. Like, if I go back to when I first bought the R and I had the EF lens on it, EFL 24 to 70, I couldn't, yeah. get, I couldn't get that, uh, the, like the L. I couldn't yeah, get yeah, that yeah. sharpness on a macro because mm. of the shakiness of it. Because yep. the, there's no IBIS. There is image stabilization. When I got the RF 24 to 70, my whole life changed. <laughs> and I could do a lot of handheld stuff. Uh, but it, it takes me back to what I rank as a photographer as a good stabilization in a camera. Mm. You know, mm. you're trying to get a little bumblebee or some little critter yeah. and, and you're holding it and you have, you know, you have to crop in on the sensor to get it because you don't have a macro lens because that's not what you do for a living. This is just your hobby, the, the photo side of it. Uh, yeah, it's incredible what you can get out of yeah. this little body. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, overall thoughts. Overall thoughts. I'm very happy with the R8. It's really, really good. I, again, no more. So, since I, the reason I bought it is not for photography, but also since I don't have IBIS, I bought a gimbal. Yes. I kind of up the price a yeah. bit, but then it made also, them comparable, really. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I'm very happy with the kit that I'm using. Mm -hmm. But yeah. From my objective opinion. Canon blows my mind with how Every great time. the pictures are. Yeah. The slow-mo was awesome. The pictures were awesome. Uh, does that mean the Sony sucks? No. 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 The Sony is also an incredible camera. Yeah. And I'm, I'm learning more and more about how powerful they are. I'm also learning more and more about how much I dislike some things with them. <laughs> we shot the entire Ren Fair episode on this guy, and I was like... Oh. Why is that overexposed? Like coming back into the edit because I was like, it shouldn't be overexposed because yeah. it wouldn't have been on my Canon. But anyway, that's <laughs> we're learning. The thing is, yeah. uh, the stabilization in the A7R4, A7R4 is an excellent bargain camera. Yeah. I mean, compared to this, it's twenty, it's two thousand dollars cheaper than the A7R5, the A7 IV. Um, and even though it's a little more expensive than him, it's not a bad buy if you want to go that way because you get you get the image stabilization. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot more uh, features as a videographer. I almost feel like this is the superior photography camera overall, oh. despite the fact that it has incredible C log. Uh, we did a concert with this actually, and I can maybe throw in a piece of that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I'll get... That's on the gimbal too. Yeah, exactly. So, boom, boom, boom. We had the R5C, the C70, the Sony uh, AR5, and some Blackmagic cameras, and this, uh, and EOS Rs. And this R8 actually had a more comparable log profile. To the C70. To the C70 than the other cameras did, yeah. which is really incredible. So you're not... Yeah, it was very fun to hear. You can't say this isn't a video <laughs> camera. No. Right? No. But it's almost a more superior photography camera. Mm. Especially if you buy the, the RF class, you're not going to be sad with this guy. No. So that's my final thoughts. <laughs> nothing, con final as thoughts. usual, nothing superiorly conclusive. Oh, hello. Nothing super conclusive. Really? Wow. Yeah. Anyway, nothing, nothing super conclusive more than to say that both of them are really great cameras. Uh, and it's, yeah, the, R, the R8 holds up. It does. It really does. Yeah. Just, just on a gimbal. <laughs> oh, but it did, uh, no, it did whoa, good. whoa. It did, but it was my lens that made it better. <laughs> I mean, I haven't bought the RF glass yet, so yeah. This, this whole video was to convince Linus that he needs to buy RF glass, not adapt EF glass. I already have. Write in the comments, fun. write in the comments so he knows. 
Thanks. Guys, <laughs> like and subscribe. If you have any more questions for us, we have both of these cameras kicking around. Yeah. Um, our, our Benjamin actually is the one that owns the, what our, our camera guy, Benjamin owns yeah. the A7 seven IV. Four, yeah. So, um, yeah, but they're around. Yeah, they're around, yeah. so we can do and tests. If you need me to slap Amanda in slow mo, I can do that. <laughs> I welcome it. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Like and subscribe. Yeah, see you.